Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in this video, I will show you my settings for TradingView, right? This is a TradingView Pro account, right? So this is a paid account. So depending on, you know, the type of account you're using, some of the features you may not have access to. So I just want, you know, you to know that this is a pro account. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through, right, uh, some of the features of TradingView, the ones that I find it very useful and as well as, you know, to give you a template that I use so in case that, you know, you want to have similar charts as me, right, you can have uh, the same template. So there are about eight things that I'm going to show you, right? So, you know, uh, you know, I hope this video kind of give you an insight into how I set up my TradingView account. So the first thing first, right, the first thing I want you to know is to let you see my properties settings, right? So the color scheme and stuff like that, you know, you can match mine. So this is the first thing, right? So uh, if I'm moving too fast, you can just feel free to pause this video and, and you know, you will follow my settings, right? So this is the scale. Uh, this is the background. Uh, typically, you can see, it's, you know, it's white background. Right, time zone session. I'm in Singapore, so this is why I I I live it at Singapore. Right, I suggest putting the same the same uh time zone as you're in. So if you're in uh, Eastern Standard Time, right, leave it as it is, Eastern Standard Time. Trading, right? Uh, you can see that now. I, I I remove a lot of all those lines. Just uh just this one I check. Events and alerts, right? These are the 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 box that I check. Okay, so this is my properties setting. Right, the second thing I want to show you is how to create a watch list. Right, so why why do you want to create a watch list, right? It helps you because, you know, for example, if you are a Forex trader or you're a stock trader, you have a watch list of markets that you trade. So it can be tiring to, you know, manually enter Euro dollar, Pound dollar, Aussie dollar every time, you know, you want to pull out a chart. So by creating a watch list, you have all the markets that you trade, right, in one uh, section and it's very convenient. So how you'll do it is you go to here. Okay, you can see that I have different watch lists, agriculture, bonds, forex, indices, non-agriculture, and even swing trading. So let's say I want to create a new watch list, right? Let's say I create a new list. I call this day trading, right? So let's say day trading, click save, right? So now I have a new uh, a new uh, section over here, right? It's called day trading. And here over here is empty because I need to populate this uh, section with, you know, the relevant markets. So let's say, you know, I am a day trader and I want to day trade euro dollar. I add Euro dollar, right? Uh, there are different uh, tabs you see over here. Since you know that Euro dollar is a Forex market, needless to say, right, you want to be selecting Euro dollar here, right? You can see over here there's FXCM, Forex.com, uh, uh, IDC, Oenda, right? What all this means is that, you know, where is TradingView going to get their feed from? Is it FXCM, Forex.com, Oenda, right? Honestly, it's not really going to make much of a difference. So, you know, let's just use Forex, I mean, FXCM, okay? So let me populate one more. How about Pound dollar? Okay, pound dollar by FXCM, I just click. So you can see that, you know, under my day trading watch list, I have two markets right now. So if you are, you know, day trading these two markets or you are trading more markets, you want to populate, you know, all the relevant uh, markets in this watch list. Okay, and that's how you, you know, go about creating a watch list. The third thing I want to show you is, you know, how to, you know, set an alert, right? This is very useful, right? Uh, I think no matter what type of trader you are, say, for example, you know, you, let's say, let's say uh, New Zealand dollar, right? This is the daily time frame. Let's say, you know, I am working full time and, you know, I don't have time to monitor New Zealand dollar all the time. But this is an area of support. This is a level that, you know, I could potentially want to trade from. So how do I create an alert? Right, there are a couple of ways to do it, right? Uh, for this method, you can actually, you know, since uh, over here, I've drawn a... No, you know what? Let me go this way, this route, okay? Uh, let's see. Since over here, I've drawn a support level, right? How do you draw this, right? It's very simple. Go here. Horizontal line, you draw, uh, you know, either support resistance. If you draw trend line, it's trend line, you know, and it's pretty self-explanatory, right? So I just horizontal line, I put it here. Okay, so this is my, you know area of support. So I can use this and create an alert as well. So I'm alert, right? Whenever price, you know, touches this level, what you'll do is you double click, go to the alert tab and you get this out, right? This is a box. So it's very simple. What is the, the market the condition, right? New Zealand dollar, right? So since I'm trading New Zealand dollar, this is it, right? Crossing, right? You can use crossing, cross up, you know, different variations of it, but you know, crossing is the most uh, uh, straightforward, right? Horizontal line, right? This is the horizontal line that, you know, I just put out earlier. Right, frequency. How how often do you want to be alerted? Right, every time you know the the, the market when it, it hits your level, you want to be alerted. You know, uh, every minute, five minutes, right, or, or other different conditions, right. So for me, I just leave it as once. Uh, 
right? Expiration day, right? Or expiration time, right? So how long before this alert would expire, right? Maybe you can set it by the end of the month, end of the week, right? Depending on you, right? Show pop-up, right? Trading view will have a pop-up, right? You have a player sound. Uh, send emails is, is useful, okay? Because, you know, uh, if you are not at your screen, at least, you know, it sends you an email or even SMS. Uh, I'm not sure whether, you know, this one, okay, yeah. This one, you would have to be, uh, uh, I guess, a premium plan, right? So I can't send SMS, but I can send email, right? So the message you can have is this, okay? So what you'll do is that, you know, uh, you click create, right? And this level over here becomes an alert level. You notice that the, the clock over here, because this is now an alert level. So what happens is that if the price hits this level, you receive an email. There'll be a pop-up on this screen as well, telling you that you know, New Zealand dollar has crossed this uh, 73448 level, okay? So this is how you set an alert, right? I think uh, for the free account, you can set a few alerts. For the pro account, you can set more. And you, you, if you have a higher tier account, you can set even more alerts. So that's how you go about you know, setting an alert. So with that said, right, the next thing I want to show you is how to have, you know, indicators on your chart, right? It's relatively simple. Just go to this tab, indicators, and you can see that there's a wide array of indicators over here, all right? Uh, Built-in one is, I believe, these are the ones that are, you know, comes default by TradingView. Public library are one are the ones that, you know, are created by TradingView users, right? So you can see that, you know, some of the, the these indicators over here, right? Like this have 16,481 likes by this guy called Lazy Bear. He created something called the Squeeze Momentum Indicator. I'm not sure what that is, right? But, you know, apparently this indicator is very popular. So the likes is uh, generally showing you which indicators are the most popular ones, okay? So I, I, I don't really use this generally because, you know, I'm just a very... Uh, simple trader who use very simple tools like moving average. So, you know, for example, if you know you want to find find moving average, you can go to build in, find, you know, all the way down to M, you know, over here, or you can just type MA and you can, you know, pretty much find it even faster. So in this case, right, I like to use the moving average exponential. So I pull it out, right, you can see on my chart over here. So you can see, right, this is the nine period moving average, right? You click this one over here, you can change your settings. Maybe you'll change to 20 period. Uh, the style you want, maybe let's say you want a red color, that is fine as well. You click OK, and this is the line you see over here, right? So one thing I want to point out is that, you know, you uh, if, for example, some charts you want to leave your moving average on, some charts you don't want to, right? So uh, what you can do is to hide your indicator so, you know, it doesn't appear on your chart and doesn't clutter it. So for example, you can just click this, it hides, right? For this 200, I can click and it hides as well. So if you want to bring out your indicators, you just unhide it, click, 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 and it just comes out, you know, accordingly. So I think this is a very useful feature for you to, you know, unclutter your chart, okay? So this is the indicators portion. Let me hide those two, okay? So now you know how to, you know, uh, create an indicator, I mean, uh, to set up your indicators, right? So there's there's a lot out here, right? I have not even covered the breadth of, of it, right? But it's up to you to explore, you know, how to go about using it. Okay, so the fifth thing that I want to share with you is uh, saving templates, right? So what is saving templates? So if you look at this, right, uh, this is called SR. If I load this, right, I have a few templates. I have a support resistance, swing trading, and trend following. So what is the difference, you know, between uh, saving templates and, you know, watch lists? So a template is, is uh, basically what is on your chart, all right? So let's say, you know, you have certain template, like maybe say this one, all right, you want to... Uh, Say you want to have these uh, indicators, right? Maybe like the RSI, RSI, stochastic and stuff like that. Let me get the RSI out. Right? Maybe you also want to have a, a MACD. All right. Okay, so you got this two out and, you know, and uh, on top of it, maybe say this, this time around, you, you don't need uh, any uh, lines at all. You don't need any support resistance. So you remove all, remove all, remove all. Okay. So this is a template that you use, right? Maybe just involving RSI, MACD and the moving average. And you want to save this template because you know whenever you look at other charts you also want to have this specific template so what you'll do is you go to here you click save as right so let's call this the indicators template indicators and you click save so it's going to uh, open a new a new tab right to save your template okay so you can see over here right so right now if i add another let's say i go to euro dollar all right this is the same template, right? If I add in a, another, say, dollar Canadian, it will have the same template as well. Dollar Canadian. Okay? And what happens if, let's say, you don't want to use this template, you want to go back to the original support resistance template. Go to load. Go to support resistance. It's going to populate up another one, right? And, okay, this is uh, this is wrong. <laughs> okay, so uh, apparently I made a mistake for this, right? So what you do is I remove this, 
remove this, okay? So for this one, okay, so, you know, you've seen that I made a mistake earlier, right? So anyway, uh, uh, this is the original support resistance template, right? So you can see that, you know, if you, you don't want this template, right, just go back to your earlier template that you have saved, right? The uh, indicators one, okay? And there you have it, right? Your indicators template that you, you see over here. Okay, you have your moving average, you have your, your is indicators over here, right? Although I agree that, you know, uh, uh, this uh, this one really kind of, you know, shouldn't be here, right? Maybe I, I, I did a slight mistake earlier, but anyway, the indicator template should look like this. So every time you, let's say you go to day trading, you go to pound dollar, right? It has all the uh, uh, relevant uh, template that you have, you know, saved earlier. I believe all these lines are here is because I have a, uh, other, doll, other charts, right, that have all these lines here. So what you want to do, if you just want to remove it, it's quite simple. Uh, hide all drawing tools, and there you go. <laughs> simple, right? So anyway, that's the, the use of your template. Okay, so moving on, right, after template, what I want to show you is, you know, how do you actually compare uh, uh, between different markets, right? So let me just close some tab first, right? So let's say we go back to our day trading tab, right? Uh, let's say Euro dollar, how about that? Okay, so maybe let's say we are looking at the one hour time frame and you know, you want to trade euro dollar, right? Let's say you're a forex trader and you know, maybe you are having a hard time deciding should I be, you know, trading euro dollar or pound dollar or Aussie dollar, which is the better market to trade. So what you can do, right? Maybe if you want to compare, see which is the stronger or weaker one, you click this compare tab. It's going to pull out the market that you want to compare with. So let's say euro dollar and Aussie dollar. Okay, you click Aussie dollar. It's going to pull out this Aussie dollar uh, this orange line is basically the Aussie dollar on the one hour time frame. So you can see over here, right, that the euro dollar, right, is uh, somewhat, I would say, if you just uh, zoom out a little. Okay, so let me try this again, right? So let's say you are you are trading euro dollar on the one hour time frame, right? And let's give a better example, like say, let's say New Zealand dollar, right? You want to see which is a stronger currency pair to trade. So you put in the New Zealand dollar symbol, Right, and it's gonna appear as this orange line over here. This is the New Zealand dollar overlay, right? So this is basically the New Zealand dollar uh, chart, but it's a line chart. And you can see that New Zealand dollar, right, it's uh, somewhat weaker than Euro dollar because if you compare, right, what it's doing right now, Euro dollar has basically already rallied higher, but New Zealand dollar is still hovering near the lows. So let's say if you want a short, right, New Zealand dollar would be a better candidate for a short. And if you want a long, right, Euro dollar would be a better candidate to long. So this is uh, what you call relative strength, where you compare, you know, the markets in the same sector to see who is stronger or weaker, right? There are, you know, many ways you can do it, right? Let's say, for example, you can even, you know, do the S&P 500 and NASDAQ, you know, and the Dow, you know, let me let me just show you. So let's say we pull out the S&P 500, right? Let's say this is the daily market, right? So we don't want New Zealand dollar, let's remove it. So this is the S&P 500. And you want to compare it, let's say, with NASDAQ, right? NASDAQ is, uh, you know, uh, another index, right? You want to see which is stronger. You just pull out the NASDAQ, and there you have it. Okay, so this is the NASDAQ one. All right, you can see that NASDAQ had a very sharp decline over here, but the S&P is basically just range-bound. All right, if you want, you can even just pull out and say, let's say, uh, uh, Hang Seng. All right, it's another uh, index, right? I think it's Hang Seng Index Futures. So click this one out. And then you can see the Hang Seng is the orange one in terms of relative strength, seems to be very strong because it broke out and you know, still trading near the highs, whereas S&P is still consolidating, NASDAQ is still consolidating here. So you can see that you know you want to be comparing basically the markets within the same sector and this compare tool is, is very useful to let you know who are the leaders and the laggards. Okay, so this is how you go about doing it for the compare function, that is number six. And number seven, I want to show you is how to use, uh, I mean, how to actually have time frame, I mean, uh, Oh, never mind. Basically, how to actually you know select the time frame quickly, right? So this is a, a so-called a ninja hack if you want to call it. So over here, you can see that these are all the time frames that I use commonly, right? The 15 minutes, one hour, four hour, daily, weekly, right? And you can actually uh, change this, you know, to whatever you are, uh, whatever you prefer, right? Just go to here, this one, and you can see I've clicked star, 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 star. This means I favorite all this time frame. So this is why they appear here. If I change my favorite, say I don't want 15 minutes, I change it to five minutes. Right, the five minutes appear here, right? Uh, if I don't want my one hour, I change it to two hour, the two hour will appear here. So this is a very cool trick, right? That you know you can have uh, access the time frame that you want quickly in just one click instead of clicking this, then clicking uh, the time frame here. So it saves you one step, right? So this is a, it's a trick I learned from one of my subscriber, right? So 
So thank you, right, for sharing this knowledge. So this is the 15 minutes, one hour, four hour, and daily, weekly, and, you know, basically the ones that I use commonly. All right, so this is the tip number seven. And last but not least, I want to show you how to actually track uh, multiple time frames. All right, this is very useful for a day trader because as a day trader, you typically, you know, want to see what is the higher time frame doing before, you know, you enter your trades off the lower time frame. So let's say on pound dollar, Okay, let's say pound dollar, this is the four hour time frame. Oh, you know what, let's, let, let's use uh, the daily, okay? And what you wanna do is you click this one over here, right? And you click this. What happens is that it's gonna split your window into two, right? You wanna basically track time on all charts. So basically, never mind. I'll explain this later. You click this, okay? So you can see that these two charts are the pound dollar, right? This is the daily time frame. Right here daily. So if you want to change, let's say this one, let's say you want to be the 15 minute time frame. So you can see that this chart over here now is the 15 minute time frame. Okay, so this is useful. Why do I say that? Because as day traders, you want to see what the higher time frame is doing. So you can see that on the 15 minute time frame, the price is you know maybe coming down lower. And maybe you want to reference it to see what the higher time frame is doing. Say, okay, maybe you know it's uh you know it's still uh having this uh retracement move, right? There's an area of support that you want to be aware of. So maybe for now, you still can take a, a short trade, right? With expectation that, you know, there is this area of support coming in on the daily time frame, right? So this is how you go about, right? Uh, using two time frames to be shown on your charts, you know, uh, in sync. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, right? There's another, uh, this feature can be further used, right? You know, by having this different, uh, how to say, uh, different uh, layout, right? For example, if you want to track time on all charts, right? if you check this, right? And let's say, this is the 15 minute time frame. This is the daily time frame. If I click here, right, this 15 minute time frame will go onto that specific daily candle on this specific day. If I go back, say, in time in this candle over here, I want to see what the 15 minute time frame is doing on this bar. You click, it's going to change accordingly, right? So, this is, uh, it may be useful for you if you want to, you know, look what a lower time frame is doing on a specific day. Maybe there's a huge rally on this day. What did the price action look like on the 15 minutes? You click this. And it looks something like this, right? So you have an idea, you know, of what I'm talking about. So let's say the most recent price action is this. So you click this, right? And it's pretty much looking like this, all right? So this is the, t the track time on all charts, right? Useful depending on, you know, whether it, it makes sense for you, right? So sync crosshair on all charts. So basically the crosshair will appear on both of this chart, right? Link interval to all charts. So basically this will be the daily. And this also will be the daily if I'm not wrong. And link symbol basically means that, you know, these two are the same symbol, British pound and British pound, right? So this is how you can actually actually use uh, these different features. And of course, you can, you know, change it in this format if you like it, right, up and down, right? And there are different formats that you can use, right? But I believe, right, maybe if you want to use the other formats, again, you have to use, uh, you have to be on a higher tier account, right? But I think this is, is uh, either this or this are pretty, pretty neat to start with. Okay, so with that, right, that's all I have for you in this video, right? Maybe just do a quick recap to what I've covered so far. Number one, I, sh I shared with you the properties, right, on how I go about uh, having the same layout that you see on my chart, right? So just right-click properties, you know, pause the screen if you need to, to follow my template. The second thing I shared with you is how to create a watch list, right? Very simple, create a watch list. You just go to here, this tab, you can start creating a watch list. The third thing I talk about is how to set alerts. Again, very simple, right? You can either click this to set an alert or if you have a support resistance on your chart, double click it, go to the alert tab. The fourth thing I spoke about is indicators. How do you actually get it out on your chart and how to, you know, use it? Simple, use this tab over here, indicators. Uh, the fifth thing I talk about is, let's see, uh, I talk about how do you actually save your template, right? Template is useful, especially if, you know, sometimes you use indicators, sometimes you just use support resistance. So go to here, right? You can actually create new template and, you know, save it. Number six, I share with you how to compare between different uh, markets within the same sector, right? This is the compare function to identify which are the, the uh, leaders and the laggards, right? Number seven, I talk about how do you actually have your time frame as a shortcut at this part over here, just click this one and you just uh, select the star to favorite your time frame. And last but not least, right, I spoke about the, you know, tracking the multiple time frame. Let's call this multiple time frame, right? Just go to this one, right? Select the, your desired window and you can have a multiple time frames shown on one screen. So that's what I've covered in this video. I hope this is useful. And with that, right, I wish you good luck and good trading. And if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button below. I would really, really appreciate it. So with that, I will talk to you soon.